Okay, hello. Welcome back to The Drip Project. If you haven't been here before, I'm your host, Tara Priolo. I am your resident, white-facing, biracial, multi-passionate musician, and I talk about the ish that nobody wants to talk about and push you to do the same. And we are going to be talking about the ish today. This is a riff. Welcome to them if you've never been to one before. This is a place where I explore some thoughts. Now, the other night, I got up in my stories and I was talking about how I understand people abstaining to vote. And those of you that are in the U.S., you know that we have a proxy approximately like three weeks, I think, until voting. It's the first Tuesday in November, right? And we're left with this choice. And the more content that I consume from various different people, uh, you know, I got to level with y'all, the more I'm like, oh, I don't even know what direction I want to take this. I don't even know what I want to do in the voting booth. And I have usually been so solid, right? But even in the 2020 election, it was really hard for me to vote for the national election, right? For the presidency. And part of that was because I knew it was another white man riding the fame of a black man and trying to convince us that he would do something for us, right? And this time around, it feels like we have what we've been asking for, except that it's not in Kamala Harris. Uh, those of us that have identified with democratic policies, but during even, I remember the primaries in or 2020, and I remember thinking Kamala is really good on racism, but there's some things that make me uncomfy about her, right? There's some things that I'm not, I'm not really sure that she's for me. And there's a few things that I've, you know, I, I want to talk about here that Politics has long been a game, right? It's been a game of choosing the lesser of two evils, but also for the politicians, it's always a game of building a coalition and building almost a cult following, right? Now in this day and age, we have red mega and we have blue mega, and they're both saying vote red no matter who, vote blue no matter who, uh, maybe more of a cult on the other side, but it is more divided and the people on the extremes sort of become one one entity they act very similarly and i don't disagree that there is a blue mega wing of the party at this point and then we're struggling with a world where we see the tragedies on display where we open up our phones daily to see another child killed in Palestine, to see another hospital blown up, to see bombs falling in Lebanon, to see another school shooting. And we wonder, a Democrat is in office and these things are still happening. And in fact, a Zionist Democrat and the Democrats running are Zionist Democrats. And I understand when Palestinians say, you shouldn't vote or vote third party. And I understand that black people not are not a monolith and nor are Palestinians. No group of people is a monolith. I understand when black people say, well, we have a better chance at change underneath Kamala. And I frankly don't know how true that is because we had a chance at change under Obama and the white lash after Obama caused us to go backwards. And when I think about every political office, right? And, and 
think about as I was speaking about and spill the beans yesterday about racism being an underpinning to the world. When I think about that and I think about the way that the U.S. government is built on white supremacy and it is functioning the way it should and how can I vote for an office of white supremacy because of the things that people have to give up no matter the color of their skin, no matter the content of their actual authentic character prior to becoming a politician, they are still occupying the office of white supremacy. They are occupying an office called commander in chief. They are occupying a violent, powerful office. And at this point, powerful is synonymous with violence. It is synonymous with class. It is synonymous with wealth. It is synonymous with danger. And so when I think about Kamala and I think about how far removed she is from perhaps what she was prior to her fame as a politician and prior to her fame in California and prior to her vice presidency, I think man, what if a true progressive occupied the office? The thing that they told us Joe Biden was because he was progressive on a couple policies that he hasn't gotten done. What if a true progressive occupied the office? What if there was a third party viable candidate? And to those of you out there that say that, you know, this, that it's circular logic that a third party candidate cannot be viable because we won't vote for a third party candidate, it is not viable. It is not a viable candidate and it is not a viable candidate because the system makes it so and because the third party candidates are not on the ballot in the majority of the states and therefore because of the electoral college we cannot vote for a third party candidate but regardless let's say that there was a actual progressive person running a person like Cory Bush a person with boots on the ground a person with true humanity in their heart wanting for the world to be free for liberation, not just talking about peace and justice and the right to defend itself, but rather someone that is actually talking about true and utter liberation. Would that person occupy the office of the presidency and be able to change it? And I think my answer is no. And I go back to what I always ask, but just what is beyond and how can we tear this down and support everyone? Because it is not enough to just call for revolution. It is not enough to just share our joy. It is not enough to just fight back. We must build platforms and build communities that can withstand the revolution because the revolution is going to be hard. The downfall is going to be hard. It is going to force all of us out of discomfort. But what is beyond? Because if we can't have a true progressive who believes in liberation and humanity and actual care for the people and community in the office of white supremacy, in the highest office of white supremacy, in fact. Because that person, once they get to that office, would no longer be a progressive, would no longer be fighting for the liberation that those of us outside of the 1%, outside of the powerful, are and I go round and round and round and round and round and I realize what a privilege it is to sit in a solidly blue state although they think it's purple now What a privilege it is to be able to choose and not feel like my life is on the line, whether that be a Palestinian American or an African American or a Black American or a marginalized anything American. 
And I wonder when we are mostly marginalized, how we cease putting our own marginalization forward and more important than someone else's. And I will leave you with this. I just saw on a TikTok by Conscious Lee that I reposted and perhaps I will find it and put it in the comments here. He said, fascism is still fascism, even in a silk press and a beautiful smile. It is not the lesser of two evils when we're talking about bombs dropping and we're talking about children dying in schools and we're talking about police kneeling on people's necks for nine minutes. The president isn't going to save us regardless of who they are. The office of the presidency is white supremacy. The office of the presidency is fascist. The office of the presidency does harm regardless of the name of the person occupying it. And so I understand those abstaining. I understand those writing in a third party. I understand those writing in imaginary characters like Mickey Mouse and SpongeBob. I understand because I am privileged in this choice of what to do because I'm not forced to vote for Kamala and I'm not forced to vote for Donald Trump. And I wonder If our choice were not binary, and remember binaries are a function of white supremacy, what would this world look like? If instead of building coalitions behind one person, we built coalitions behind progressive groups, what does collective coalition look like? What does a restructuring of power look like? What does new power look like? Does it always look violent? Does it always look the way it's inflicted now? I don't think so. I'm sure I will revisit this topic in the next couple of weeks. I'm sure I will revisit it after the election is closed. I'm sure I will revisit it over whoever is president for the next four years. We have survived so much. And this too, we shall fight with joy and love and community. And with that, I say toodles. Continue to be anti-racist. Be safe. Wear a mask. Make good trouble. Do good work. I love y'all hardcore. And I'll see you around on this new podcast. Put your comments below. Joy is our revolution. Step into it belong to it. Let's get free. <laughs>